Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the section one of the O-Level English Language Paper 2, October, November 2020, and that is variant 2-2. Okay, so in this video, we are going to focus on section one, reading for ideas, which is related to passage one that is entitled Major Sporting Events. Okay. And just be on the lookout for other videos because in a different video, I'll be going through section two. Okay, so for our first question related to section one, we are being asked to identify the benefits and drawbacks of major sporting events as outlined in the passage. Okay, and the benefits here, I have them in purple because in the passage, they will be highlighted in purple and the drawbacks will be highlighted in green, okay? And for the, the part A of question one, we are asked to uh, write down our answers, not only in the, in the wording that's used in the passage, so it doesn't have to be our own wording, but also in bullet points, okay? So they, we don't have to write full sentences. And there is also a total of 12 marks that is awarded for for both uh, both parts here, so for all of our little bullet points. Okay, so I believe that it would be here I would have six, and then over here I'd have six six points. Okay, so one one mark per relevant content point. Okay, and then in part B, we are asked to write a summary of the benefits and drawbacks of major sporting events, basing ourselves on the bullet points that we wrote down in 1A, so the part above over here, okay? And then the second question, which is the last question for our section one, is asking that we find one opinion from paragraph one, paragraph two, and paragraph five. Okay, the question is asking to reread paragraphs 1, 2, and 5, but here I'm just, in this, uh, for the sake of saving some time, I've underlined the opinion, um, which I will underline as we read the first time, and that's right. I recommend that you do that during your exam. You can definitely find the, the opinion as you, read, uh, as you read the first time. It's just so that you don't have to go back and reread, you know, it, if you can save time, why not? Okay, so remember the opinion is underlined and then over here we have benefits and drawbacks in purple and green respectively. Okay, so now if we go to our passage, you'll notice that here I wrote down a little legend of the, the colors and how I organize the information. And that's very important. I also recommend that you do this so you don't have to keep going back and forth to see, get your uh, your little color coding here. You could just have them up here if you, if you get lost or you don't remember. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and read the text. Major sporting events attract public attention at a local and global level and in the media too. Okay, so they attract public attention at local and global level. So that's the benefit. It attracts attention. Okay. A sense of national pride is generated. Hearing your national anthem played when, for example, competitors start a match or are presented with medals, encourages a sense of belonging to a particular part of the world. Okay, so it generates a sense of national pride. Uh, so when you think about a, a sport, I'll use a football, for example, because it's, it's huge in the world. It's an international, really international thing. So when uh, your national team we, wins, uh, sometimes you, you have that pride. You Yeah, my country won, and you're proud to be a part of that country. So that's a benefit. Okay, moving forward. 
Events such as the Olympic Games or the Football World Cup bring people together from different nations as competitors, spectators, and sometimes even heads of state. Okay, so another benefit of major sporting events is that it brings people together and it brings uh, people who are from different nations, so people who during regular days probably wouldn't be around each other. It brings all kinds of people together. It is reassuring to see leaders of countries sitting together, chatting, smiling, and watching when otherwise their names have been linked to hostility and suspicion towards one another. Okay? Hosting such sporting events earns income for the host country or city. Rio de Janeiro gained $110 million from hosting the 2014 Football World Cup, while the same year the Commonwealth Games brought in $100 million for Glasgow. Glasgow. <laughs> Okay, so uh, two things here. We have a benefit right over here. Okay, so uh, major sporting events, it earns income for the whole country because people go, uh, there's tourists, and people spend money, so it's good for the economy. Okay, that's a benefit. And then over here, we also have an opinion. Okay, and here the author says, it is reassuring to see leaders of countries sitting together, chatting, okay? Um, it's an opinion because this is not a, it's, it's not a, it's not a, a feeling that everyone may have, you know? Um, somebody who's maybe deep into politics and who really cares um, might look at that and feel happy or maybe if there's somebody who who doesn't like um, one of those leaders and you're you're not okay with them uh, being seen together and you're really an extremist and you, you might not like seeing them happy and, and sitting next to each other chatting. Okay, so to some people it's reassuring and to some people it's not. So this is an opinion, okay? Because not, not everybody would be... Uh, unanimous about this not everybody would agree the same thing there's probably one person that you can find in the world that doesn't like seeing two different leaders of maybe a specific country sit together in peace <coughs> excuse me okay moving on these events can mark the culmination of years of preparation Perhaps grueling daily training so participants gain immeasurable satisfaction from just being there. Okay, another benefit over here. So these Olympic Games, when we're talking about Olympic Games especially, but any major sporting event, it takes usually years to prepare for them. Okay, so... It's a celebration after years of preparation. It's finally here, and you, you're just happy that the day has finally come, right? Or a simple uh, comparison, <laughs> another just a uh, day to day comparison. If you're making food or you're baking something and it takes you long and the recipe's long, once it's done, you're like, finally, I can just eat this, right? So it's the same feeling when you're getting ready for um, when you're getting ready for an uh, an event like this, a sporting event. It takes years. So when the day comes, you're happy. Okay, another example, same thing with your probably your O level exams. <laughs> you prepare for a long time, and after when it's done, whether you 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 feel like you did really well or not, you're you just you have that relief of finally like the day's here it's it's over right moving on of uh, viewing these events raises the profile of sport in general and the importance of keeping fit seeing a record-breaking run might motivate people not necessarily 
to think they can emulate the success, but to join a running club or to take out a gym membership. Okay, so another benefit is that these major sporting events, they definitely promote sports and being healthy and being fit. Okay, because it, it exposes people to, to these things. Okay, and it can inspire them to be healthy. Okay. Famous athletes act as role models. For people, particularly the young, evidence of this exists in the scale of merchandise ranging from the obvious, such as sports schools, to the surprising, such as soap and lunch boxes. Okay, so another benefit is that famous famous athletes are role models, and especially the young people look up to them. So this is a benefit. This one's when you read when you read it just like that, you might not think like, oh like but who cares? Why is this so important? And if you dig a little deeper, the the reason why it's important is because it again from a from a commercial marketing standpoint, it brings in money. So if you're somebody who sells a like Adidas or, or Nike, uh, if you could put a sponsor, a famous athlete, to wear your t-shirts or, and just because they wear it, then people will buy it. Okay, so it's uh, from a business outlook. Okay. There is nothing more thrilling than witnessing athletes at the peak of their physical fitness. Again, so... Remember paragraph one, paragraph two. So in paragraph two, we have another opinion. Okay. There is nothing more thrilling than witnessing athletes. Okay. So right now, if I ask you in your head to think, can you think of something that is more thrilling than witnessing athletes at the peak of their fitness? Um, you probably can. And if you can, that means that there is an opinion that this statement is an opinion because the author clearly says that there is nothing more thrilling. Okay, so that's not completely accurate. People can there's somebody who can maybe find something more thrilling than an athlete being super fit. Okay, so we have an opinion again. By the way, excuse me, in the background, if you hear some sirens, it's because I, I live near uh, a fire station. So <laughs> I, I'm, I get the, the fortune to hear the police or the firefighter sirens quite often throughout my day. <laughs> um, okay, but anyway, moving forward. Major sporting events help people to see what endurance, training, and skill can achieve. Whether running, whether through running 100 meters in just under 10 seconds, skating in perfect harmony with a partner, or scoring that apparently impossible goal. Okay, so another benefit is that people... At these major sporting events, you're dealing with athletes of very high caliber, like high level, okay, so, and they work hard, okay, they work really, really hard to achieve their level, so the people like us who watch these athletes, we can see, like, wow, like, this is the result, so we, you have the result of hard work, and, um, you know, they're human, just like you and I so if they can do it then through hard work you could probably do it too so it's a it's a good reminder it's inspiring motivating okay now we're at the third paragraph and the third paragraph we can relax there's no opinion um, we just have to remember when we hit paragraph five that we would be looking for the opinion most major sporting events attract spectators. Cricket fans attend international matches together 
Members of local tennis clubs attend championship events and groups of football supporters travel long distances to cheer on their teams. Okay, so benefit major sporting events, they attract a lot of people, right? And here, um, another good point, right? I'm not going to highlight this, but uh, people travel long distances for major events. So it doesn't matter um, where the event is happening. There's people even take planes, right? So there's no limits to the distances that people are willing to travel. The, the bigger the event is, the further people are willing to, to come from. Okay? All of this brings extreme enjoyment to spectators and unites them in a common purpose of friendship. Okay? So, again, this is similar to the point that we have over here. Where is it? Um, yes. It brings people together, right, from different nations. Here we, the point, the similar point is reiterated. So people are, unite. So people come together in the purpose, in the common purpose and friendship, right? So even when you're not at the major event uh, yourself, maybe you're watching it with family or friends, people get together internationally, uh, or locally okay and travel is not necessary to bring about enjoyment as spectators can view the event at home on television okay another benefit is that you don't really need to travel like I just said some people view these events I think it's fair to say most people actually view these events from from a TV, whether they're at a restaurant, at a bar, at home, usually you don't have to to travel super far. Okay, um, so this was a semicolon. So, uh, as spectators can view the event at home on television, as many people can now watch programs at a time of their choosing. They no longer have to worry about differences in time zones. Although there will always be some fans keen enough to sit up all night to watch a favorite athlete or team. Okay, so again, since these programs are, are uh, recorded, you can always watch reruns or you can, you don't have to watch the events live, right? So I guess that's the benefit. No, actually, I'm going to just check something here quickly. Okay, write down the benefits of major sporting events. Okay, so here, the time zone difference, right? The fact that these, the fact that these events are recorded on TV through cameras, right? Um, can we say that can, can we say that this point here about the not having to worry about time zones is directly a benefit of major sport events? It's arguable. Okay. I would say I would to be honest, I would choose different points, <laughs> which is why I didn't highlight, but you could argue that it is. Because the truth is that a major sport event, the ones that are really big, are the ones that are, um, you know, you find them on YouTube. You find them um, maybe any, you can, there's many ways to stream them and also watch them at different times, okay? Compared to like a local, uh, regional uh, soccer game or football game, sorry, or something. Um, you could say, yeah, the bigger it is, the the more coverage it gets, but uh, up to you. But for me, I left it. <laughs> but I think that you can, with more explanation, like good explanation, you, you could argue it's a benefit of a major sport defense directly and not just a benefit or of having TV. Hmm. Okay. 
Um, moving forward, paragraph four. Okay. However, okay. And here, this word here, however, is the key word. Um, I noticed this pattern in paper two, passage ones, is that you'll always have a word that tells you, okay, now we're switching. So from just reading this word here, however, it just makes a light bulb go in my go off in my head and I and I know that I'm going to flip from benefits to drawbacks okay so however there is a downside to big sporting events right so right there we're no longer talking about the benefits we're moving on to the drawbacks so the negative stuff okay for participants there is huge pressure to succeed Pressure which might come from the expectations of fans, trainers, and even their families. Okay, so of course, these are huge events. There's a lot of people watching, so the pressure is huge, okay? And these major events also, um, they don't come around often. So it's like, imagine you're participating at the Olympics, okay? If you screw up at the Olympics, um, you screw up, it's, you can't make up for it next year, you have to wait quite a long time again, <laughs> so, and that's if you don't get too old, and, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of things um, behind scene, so the, the pressure is real, okay, this might lead to the mentality that sport is about winning at all costs, for example, it is not uncommon to witness footballers having temper chant tantrums because the match isn't going their way. Okay, so another drawback is that you get that mentality that you must win at all costs. Okay, so here I would have highlighted this. You can highlight this. It's the it's a part of the same point, but I think this one is more short. Okay. Um, but yes, winning at all costs and people uh, get angry when things don't go their way. Okay. The view, that, the view that sport is about winning at all costs might lead to cheating. Okay. Sometimes even by taking performance enhancing drugs like steroids, unfortunately, there are many record cases of this kind of behavior. Okay? So another drawback is that people end up cheating because they want to win. Although hosting such an event brings wealth to the host country or city, huge sums of money are needed to build stadiums and to stage the events. Some people complain that money is wasted on increasingly elaborate opening and closing ceremonies, which might have more to do with politics than support. Okay, so this is a, it's a big drawback that I, I myself and have heard before. It's true. So when you think of, uh, again, the Olympics, right? Huge um, sporting event. A lot of money goes into building the facilities that are needed to to host these events, right? So countries and cities spend a lot of money to make sure these things are fancy and ready for the cameras and for all the important people that will be coming to witness the event, okay? And people say that the money is wasted. And that in the end, um, that these huge sport events, it might be more about politics than sport, okay? Because you want your country to look good. You want people to come and to, to say good things about the country in which the sport was hosted, right? So it becomes more a, polit a politic thing than the actual sport itself. Because if you think about... Um, for example, again, football, you just need a ball and a goal and, then, and a grass, right? At, at its core, 
you don't need fancy stadiums with all the lights and all these cool things, right? So yeah, politics. Many things in this world go back to politics. <laughs> okay, moving forward. Others argue that budgets for more useful things such as healthcare, schools, and roads suffer when money is used for sporting events instead. Okay, so another drawback is that the budgets, right, the money that could go elsewhere, right, such as healthcare, which is super important, schools, education, a good infrastructure for a city, country, like roads right, the money that could go to these things are redirected towards building stadiums for a sport event, okay, so that's a drawback, moreover, ticket prices are usually so expensive that local people often can't afford to attend, okay, another dry drawback is that these events are so expensive that <laughs> the people who live in, in the very hosting country or city, so host country or city, excuse me, they don't even get to participate, right? So it's pretty sad, okay? And here, paragraph five, so we have our opinion. Depriving locals of the opportunity to experience sporting events is a terrible injustice, okay? So why is this an opinion? because this is definitely arguable and to say that so it's it's a it's not a when we talk about injustice right we're talking about somebody's right okay so the locals right if if we look at the the constitution of a of a country or like a um, of a country, so the national, is it, is it against the basic right, you know, is it against the basic right of someone to, to, to not allow them to participate to a sporting event? I think that, you know, if we look at, like, human rights and stuff, I don't think that being allowed to go to your, um, to a, a sporting event that your country is hosting. I don't think it's a part of the list of like a, a right as a citizen. You know, citizens have the right to, to feel safe, protected, uh, you know, freedom. Um, but this one is, it's, it's not a fact, okay? So to say, to go all the way to saying that this is an injustice is definitely an opinion from the author, okay? Additionally, after the sporting event has taken place, there are often no advantages for the local communities because many of the new stadiums lie empty. Okay, Another major drawback is that all of the money that is thrown to build stuff for, the, for these sporting events, usually after they're empty, so they can't even, they don't have any use after the event. Okay? That's a major problem. Okay. And last paragraph six, it can be very expensive to send participants to major events. Okay, It is all very well for a country to bring back several medals, but if each one of those medals costs a huge amount of money per participant because public funding paid for travel or for specialized equipment or clothing, it might be questioned whether the expenditure was justified by the results okay so it can be expensive to send the participants to uh, the Olympics or any major sporting events so you know usually when they win if they win gold medals and you can't guarantee that all of the people that you send are going to come back with first place you know I don't it I don't think it ever happened that way that uh a certain country just won like uh well, like talking about the olympics specifically that every every participant from a country just wins all of the gold medals right so 
sometimes the money that you're investing is uh, you might not be getting, right? You might not have a good return on investment. So it means that you're, you're actually going to lose money in the end and you're not going to. It's not worth it, right? You won't get it all back. So that's another major, major drawback. Okay, so we are done with this reading. Highlighted a few things. Okay, so you see now the, 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 the thing to retain from this is that when you do things this way, you have all your information. So you can easily complete 1A as well as question 2. Okay, so let's go ahead with that. Benefits of major sporting events, so we have sense of national pride is generated, that's already given, so we'll have to find six more points. Here, um, so I'll take this one, it brings people together from different nations, okay? So bring people together from different nations. Oops. Together from different nations. Okay. Oops. I think I'm going to add this here. Okay. Second point. Sporting, such sporting events earns income for the host country or city. So we're going to take earns income for the host country or city. City, hopefully the typing isn't too loud for you. Okay. And then our third point, so we have one, two. Need four more. Events can mark the culmination of years of preparation. Okay, so another benefit. Um, so, actually, this I highlighted here. These events can mark the culmination of years of preparation. Um, I think I would have gone with this instead. I should have highlighted here, actually. Okay, so because it's the culmination of years of preparation, participants just feel so much satisfaction from just being there. Okay, so that's a benefit. Um... Okay, and what I'm doing here is I'm thinking. Okay, I'm thinking of how I can reword this. So this is also just to uh, give you some tips when you're right at the examination. D don't waste time. If, you're, if you feel like you're thinking too much, right, just you have other points that you can choose from. Okay, that's the good thing about having highlighted a, lo a lot of things you can choose. So if this is going to cause you too much trouble, you just move on. But uh, here, since I'm not in that examination setting, I'm just going to to figure it out quickly. So, um, do I'll say due to the many years of preparations, participants feel satisfaction just from being there. Okay. Due to the many years. Due to the potential many years of preparation oops preparation i'm writing that correctly yep the preparation the participants feel satisfaction from just being there okay Fourth point, viewing these events raises the profile of sport in general, okay, and the importance of keeping fit. 
viewing these events, races, the profile of the sport in general. and the importance of keeping fit. Keeping fit, okay? Again, doesn't have to be our own words. So here we have four, two more. Famous athletes act as role models for people, particularly the young, okay? So I'll just take this famous athletes, act as role models, okay? Oops. For people, young ones, one more. Okay. Um, help people see what endurance training and skill can achieve. We'll see what uh, see what endurance training and skill. Endurance training and skill can achieve, achieve, okay. So here we have our one, two, three, four, five, six. So we get our six marks, okay. Um, this one, famous athletes act as role models for people, especially the young ones. Uh, yeah, it's a benefit because young people get role models. I was kind of hesitating because I was thinking of the benefit more from like a, um, a business standpoint, right? To get more revenue. Um, but I think uh, we could keep it that way. Okay, that's good enough. So now we're looking at the drawbacks. Okay. For participants, there is a huge pressure to succeed. For sure, that's in green. Okay, we have that here. Uh, not uncommon to witness footballers having temper tantrums, and that comes from the fact that um, the pressure, right? So we're talking about the pressure here. So the pressure might lead to a mentality that sport is about winning at all costs. Okay. to a mentality that participants must win at all cost. Okay. Um, so that's cheating. Okay, so here I'll combine these two points. So that is um, lead to cheating. Okay. And then over here we have next one. Huge sums of monies of money are needed to build stadiums and to stage the events. Okay, I need to build stadiums and to stage the events. Okay, so that's two, three. Some people complain that money is wasted. 
Okay. Um. which might have more to do with politics than sport. Uh, I'm quickly... This is a little bit tricky, so I think what I would say here, looking at this point, which might have more to do with politics than sport. So how I'm trying to figure out how I can make it smooth and bring out this point here that the sporting events sometimes have more to do with politics than sport. Actually, I think I'll, I'll say that actually. People, some people believe that the money spent has more to do with politics than the sport itself. Right. So that's three, need two more. Okay. So budgets for more useful things suffer when money is used for sporting events okay so examples um schools healthcare suffer when money is used for sporting events, okay? Um, by the way, over here, IE, IE uh, means that is, and EG is an abbreviation for example, okay? So we have one, two, three, four, two more. Okay, ticket prices are usually so expensive that local people often can't afford to attend. Okay, so here, local people often can't afford to attend these events. Okay, one more. After the sporting event has taken place, uh, this one is pretty long, so why don't we just skip it and we just go to the short one here that we can easily take. It can be very expensive to send participants to major events. Okay, so here, it can be very expensive to send participants to sporting events. There we go. So there you have it for 1A. We have our six content points in bullet point form, right? For the drawbacks of major sporting events and the benefits. And we got our full 12 marks, okay? And the next thing here in part B is to write the summary. And the key thing about this summary is that it must be in continuous, continuous writing, so full sentences that are relevant, well-organized, and easy to follow, okay? And here we are asked to write using our own words as far as possible, so this must be in your own words, okay? And there's a cap of 180 words and a minimum of 150. Okay, and I definitely highly recommend to stay between the word count, uh, hit the minimum for sure, and also don't go above. Uh, but if I had to, if I had to choose one rule to break, I would, I would maybe be closer to this bound. I rather write less and have a good summary than just go overboard because I think 
when it gets too much, it's too much, and the marker might get frustrated. So, but if you give the writer something that's maybe shorter than what they wanted, and but still really good quality, they might be like, okay, fine, right? But too much is too much. <laughs> okay. Um, so here for this summary, actually, I won't. I won't write this. Uh, I won't write this one. Life for you. Maybe in a d different video I will. Um, but the key is definitely transition words. Okay. Transition words uh, to make your sentence flow. Okay. So quickly, if I just have to just read off here and dictate what my summary would look like. For you, it would start with a benefit of major sporting events is that they generate a sense of national pride, okay? And I would say these major sporting events bring people together from different nations and different walks of life, okay? And I would say additionally from bringing people together and creating a national sense of pride, the host country earns good money from these major sporting events. Okay? So transitional, uh, transition words, sorry, are very important to make it flow. Okay? But I definitely believe in your capabilities and I think you can write a great summary. Okay? If you, why, why don't we add a little twist? If you want to write a summary and leave it down in the comment, in the comment section, then I can, I can review your summary and, and give you some feedback. Okay? Maybe not all of the summaries. <laughs> that might be too much, but I'll, I could look at a few. Okay. And for question two, reread paragraphs. Okay, this we all need to do. You just have to point out the opinions, right? Remember, we found our first opinion over here. It is reassuring to see leaders of countries sitting together, chatting, smiling, and watching, etc., etc. And then we have our opinion in paragraph two that we found. And then we also have our opinion in paragraph five. Okay? So it's just a matter of just, uh, it doesn't have to be your own words, you just write them down. Okay? So there you have it. This brings us to an end of this video, right, which was going through passage one to be able to answer section one, reading for ideas, to answer the questions. Okay. I hope that this was helpful. If it was helpful, please um, give me a thumbs up or uh, give me your feedback in the comment section. Right. Um, I thank you guys for the support. I, I'm always reading what you guys have to say about the content. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy we're building our little community. And I, I really, I'm, I'm happy to see that some of you really find this useful. It makes me really happy, okay? Um, but other than that, of course, as always, I hope you have a beautiful day or beautiful night, depending on where you are located in the world, and I will chat with you soon.